your perspective on, uh, on what happened and what it all means. It's going to be fine. The world is not coming to an end. We have seen teams struggle in the past. I only have to think back to last year in which they won by seven against Arkansas at home, looked awful against AM at times on the road and losing as a 17-point dog. Uh, how many other games do we have to point to last year in which they didn't look great? And yet they had the lead in the fourth quarter of the national championship game. Everything's going to be just fine. Last week's game, albeit disappointing, does not mean anything for what can happen in the future. So I would trust Nick Saban to get these things addressed. But I will admit, Paul, it is concerning to see the team getting got by the same things that nearly got them in the weeks before. Penalties, uh, lack of composure, uh, inability to pass things off in the back end of the defense. There are a lot of things that are troubling for sure that need to get addressed, need to get addressed now. And if they don't get addressed, they'll lose to not just another team, but they could lose two more if they don't get things ironed out very quickly. But, but Greg, considering uh, these, these things have not been corrected, they've, I'm certainly sure they've been addressed, since they have not been corrected since the Texas game, why are we to believe that the rest of the season will be any different? Because sometimes suffering the pain of disappointment uh, is the only thing that gets people to change behavior, Paul. I think it's easy to go and sit there and harp on the players. And I'm sure Nick Saban, after the Texas game, went in there and raised hell saying, hey, man, we can't do this. We can't do that. We can't do this. And he was probably real ticked off at how the guys played. But the guys could ultimately look back at him and say, coach, we won. Like, I don't know what you're so upset about. We won. But when you fall short and when you actually lose games, that's when it starts to change behavior. And more often than not, Paul, dating back to 2011, Alabama's 29-1 and in the regular season following a loss. The only loss came in 2019 when Mac Jones and company went to Auburn and lost in the Iron Bowl. Uh, that was the only loss. Every other game in the regular season, Alabama's won since 2011, including three national championships, uh, including a, a national championship runner-up. So more often than not, a loss has woken the team up, and it's unfortunate that you have to suffer the pain of disappointment in order to change your behavior, but... Now I, I get the sense, and I'm sure, that Coach probably finally has the team's attention, and hopefully he does because I got news for you. LSU woke up this weekend. They're going to be a tricky game on the road. And Ole Miss, of course, as we've talked about already, will be a difficult game as well. I mean, you have to bake it into the cake that, that as, as poorly as Alabama played, they were a field goal away from winning. But that's Alabama, though, Greg, right. and you know that better than anyone. Right. Uh, so it's, it's somewhat ridiculous to even ask questions like, is there something going on? Uh, maybe different today than, than in the past, but, but it's worth asking anyway to somebody who understands that program like you. Well, I don't think there's anything wrong in asking the question, Paul. Like, I don't think um, anything's been below the belt. There are questions. I mean, it's, it's, it's reasonable, um, and it's partly because of Alabama's own excellence, right? Um, Alabama is the victim of their own success in some ways, and that the standard that we hold them accountable to as media members, as fans, as past players – the standard that they're held to is not the standard of everybody else. I mean, Alabama, I actually came away, if I'm going to be completely honest, like as a fan of the Crimson Tide, I came away almost proud of the fact that they were down 28-10. Everything was working against them. It was looking really, really grim. They looked unathletic. They looked uninspired. They looked like they were tight. And yet they found a way to make it competitive to the point where they even had the lead with only a few minutes left to play. I mean, Granted, yeah, they capitalized on Tennessee's uh, mistake in order to get the lead. But either way, I mean, I was proud of the effort. Now, that thing could have gotten real sideways because I have seen Alabama teams get down like that, a la the 2018 National Championship against Clemson. I've seen Alabama teams like that get down like that and quit. And that got ugly, the National Championship game there in 2018. That wasn't the case this past weekend. They played awful. Tennessee took advantage of their poor play, got a big lead, and then they did what they had to do to climb their way back in. They came up short in the end, but ultimately I'm sure they can probably look back at it and point to, hey, this was a mistake, this was a mistake, clean this up, maybe the outcome would be different. But uh, either way, this was Tennessee's night. They deserve to win without question. I hate, honestly, Paul, I hate how much of the attention and how much of the conversation is centered around Alabama because Tennessee ultimately deserves the praise. Uh, but 
you know, that's kind of where we're at is, is you like to build up the dynasties and then you love to tear them down. I think that's the world that we're living in. And it's no surprise that that's where we're at following a week in which Alabama played poorly. You said something uh, that Saban alluded to, Will Anderson alluded to, that, that Alabama seemed tight. I know, I know there are a lot of explanations and, and also realize you were uh, in a stadium in Florida and not in, in the stadium in Knoxville. But can you give us a general understanding of why a team would come in a little anxious, a little tight, other than the fact that there are 110,000 people there? Um, yeah, I think that's a – honestly, the, the fans and the crowd and the noise, that, that – I mean, I've said this already, and look, I, I wasn't at, I wasn't there. I, I can't speak to what it was like relative to what Knoxville's been like in the past. I've, I've played in Knoxville. I've been to Knoxville as a fan. I've been in Knoxville as a broadcaster. I think it's awesome. You know, I don't, I don't know if last week was better than any other week. I'm sure it was. I, I, I can't speak to that. But I, I get the sense that this team uh, doesn't have a ton of confidence, uh, first and foremost. Uh, I get the sense that they are tight because they, you know, they feel like they're playing as if they have something to lose. Like they were the number one team in the country and now there's only one direction to go. And that was in the preseason. And there's only one direction to go from there. Like, hey, it was all about championship. And they all talked about all offseason. Hey, it's championship or failure. Bryce said it. Will Anderson said it. Like that, if that's the standard in which your, your season is determined to success or failure, man, that's a really, really tough standard. Uh, even... Uh, I think other people that watch Alabama don't view it that way. I mean, you can have a, last year was an, a phenomenal year in my eyes. Uh, I, they didn't win the championship, still a phenomenal year. And if it's a pass fail grade, that's a passing grade to me. Maybe not by their standards, but I think they're tight because the, the expectation for what their play needs to be and what was supposed to be based on what we thought of them coming into the season is borderline unreasonable. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.